All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and, and get started. It's nice to meet both of you. Um, my name is Kendra Bassey. I am the Director of Customer Success at Commonplaces Interactive. I've been there for going on eight years, maybe nine. I've kind of lost track. I've been in my current role for a little over three years. And what I've been is I've had a wonderful opportunity to work in almost every single department at Commonplaces. I've worked with sales and marketing. I've worked with the operation side, support, account and project management. And then I also sit on the, the management team. So I also work with finance and HR. So along with that, I've worked on and completed about 200 projects. Some of them are still ongoing. Some of them are, are done. And I've also worked on various industries and positions at Common Places. We are an agency based out of Manchester, New Hampshire. We focus on building specialized and customized websites and portals for our customers. And we also help them market and keep their engagement going strong. Um, our clients run anywhere from a small mom and pop shop to manufacturing firms, cybersecurity firms, nonprofits and organizations. So the reason I'm telling you all of this is because I feel as though I've worked with a variety of different customers across a variety of different industries. And I, the one thing that I have definitely learned from all of this is that for them to be truly successful and for you to be truly successful, you must provide your customers, your members, your accounts, whatever you call them with an amazing experience with your brand. Because if they don't have a great experience with your brand, they're definitely not going to want to keep working with you and you yourself will not be as successful as if they have a great one. So that's kind of leading into why is the customer experience essential? And why is it something that we should all focus on today? The fact of the matter is that about 95% of customers tell others about a bad experience, while 87 share good experiences. This is important because if people have a bad experience with you, they're more likely to tell others and that will affect others' perception of you. Whereas if they have good experiences, they're still likely, but less likely. So you wanna make sure that you're having as many good experiences as possible, sharing that wonderful feeling and making sure that people aren't having negative interactions with you. And about 80% of customers do say that the customer experience is as important as products and services. In fact, I have also read um, different statistics that say around 80% of customers will spend more with you if you have a great customer experience. So if you're in a restaurant and you're restaurant A and there's a competitor across the street from you, you both have the exact same food, tastes exactly the same, but the experience in your restaurant is better, it's cleaner, the staff is friendlier, the menu is easier to read, more people are gonna come to you even if your burger is $5 more because they value the experience they get while they're sitting down there. So it's very important to think about when coming into the customer experience. So while we are going to be specifically talking about portals, I do want to throw out there that the way I view customer experience, it is a holistic approach. It is not just customer support that needs to worry about it. It is your entire company. This needs to be an entire company initiative from customer support, sales and marketing, the word of mouth you get out there, your actual product and service, the UI UX of the interface, and any other miscellaneous interactions. All of these combine together to create what your customer views you and their experience with you. You might have horrible customer support, but your product and service is really good, so they might chalk it up to a really bad day. Or they might have heard bad things about you, but everything they see and they hear outside of one person could be wonderful. So you have to think about a holistic approach when talking about the customer experience. And even when you approach the portals, you should try and get as many of these departments into the portal as possible. So when I say a portal, what exactly do I mean? How many of you, um, are comfortable or are aware of what a customer experience portal is, you're a part of one or your company has one. I don't know if there's a way to raise your hand. I think there is. I don't see anybody, but I'm hoping someone's raising your hand. Um, but a customer experience portal, it's basically a hub of information 
about how to interact and understand your product or service. It is where your customers would go to get information on your pricing or support, or they might go ahead and try and do an e-commerce ticket. This could be any of these items here, could be password protected or could not be. You could have reporting in there, which is very important when making future decisions. You could have a knowledge base that is easily accessed and searchable. You might have people interacting with you on social media and those type of integrations. You might have third parties. It might be a ticketing system for your support, e-commerce. It's definitely gonna be scalable. So your portal is not all of these things, but it's going to be definitely catered to your company and your customers and their experience with you. Believe it or not, about 88% of customers do expect a brand or organization to have an online self-service portal. This is as of 2020. It's very important. They're expecting you to have it. And I think that everybody really needs to understand that because customers' expectations are a big part of setting a good experience. So what are the benefits on top of outside of them just expecting you to have it? For your company, you, if you have a portal, you would definitely see cost savings in terms of less overhead and your productivity and efficiency numbers would definitely be improved. You would be able to gather, dark it, gather data to, to make future decisions and you also have higher customer satisfaction rates. So in terms of gathering data and making decisions, you have the customer who's interacting with you. You can see what articles they're reading more, what questions they're acting, the forums that they're on, all the ways that they're engaging with your company. You can find the friction with the portal and then go ahead and understand how to make things better. And then also, it's going to be omni-channel. So your internal productivity and efficiency would increase because you're not trying to have different conversations between sales, marketing, uh, your development, your operations. They're all having access to the same information so that therefore you get the cost savings. And then for your customers, the great part about the portal is it's essentially 24 hour support. It can be asked anywhere, anytime. The only thing they really need is internet access. So outside of that, they can just go in if it's five o'clock in the morning or it's 10 o'clock at night with time zones. Maybe they're outside of your time zone and they're at their desk at nine o'clock in the morning, but it's six o'clock in the morning for you and they need an answer. They can then quickly find their answers as long as the portal is set up appropriately and you have a great user interface, they'll be able to quickly find it and get that interaction they want. And again, as I mentioned before, the omni-channel approach is so important to creating their satisfaction. One thing that I absolutely hate is when I'm on the phone with someone and I give them all of my information and then they transfer me to someone else and the information doesn't transfer and I have to repeat myself. Well, through a portal, your customer would have their own profile and all of their information would be accessed by anybody, customer service rep, the marketing person, the project manager, product manager, whatever it is, they would all be able to access the information. And that really is valuable to your customer because they don't feel as though they're repeating themselves. And then also creating enhanced personalized interactions with you. They don't wanna see information that they don't wanna see. And the only way to understand the information they wanna see is to get to know them and help them build their portal and really understand who they are as a customer. So the other thing that I have found, according to American Express, is that about 60% or more of US consumers do say their go-to channel for simple inquiries. Now that's very important when I say simple inquiries, is a digital self-service tool. Now this could be your website, a mobile app, a voice response system, online chat, a portal, all these can be put together and combined, but people are looking to just go online and get their answers first before they go ahead and talk to a human being. And actually, recently in today's environment, it's actually very important to have these portals. And on Monday, Facebook, whether you believe in Facebook's truthfulness of their, their news sources or not, um, they did launch a one-stop shop portal for the coronavirus information. And one of my favorite quotes that I read in this article that I think can be applied to all concepts of creating a portal is that the top priority and focus has been making sure people get access to good information, trusted services during this pandemic. Um, 
again, people want to get the right information in regards to your company. And so creating a portal is so important. And with current events as where they are, right now there's so much information out there, people don't know what to trust. And so creating these portals where you're vetting that information is so important. And especially now when everyone's working from home, outside of learning about the information about the coronavirus, learning information about your brand and getting that support or being able to continue with their purchases is very important as well. And the data is not out there yet, but I do have a hypothesis that companies that had some sort of portal for their customers to go to will do have done better and be more successful throughout the current events of our economy rather than people who did not have a customer portal or some sort of hub for their customers to turn to in terms of turmoil. So the big question is, where do you start when you're thinking about a portal? And that's what we're gonna talk about today. I know that introduction was kind of long, but I have about seven tips in terms of things that you should think about, questions you should ask yourself and your customers when going ahead and putting your plans together for your portal. And I'm also going to go over a couple examples that I have found, some that we've worked on and some that we haven't, um, that go along with some of these tips. The first one is understand who your customers are. Now, I've been saying customer portal, but it could be anything. Your customer is who you're trying to target. It could be donors, it could be members, partners, resellers, employees. The portal is anyone. And so when you define your, your customer, define who they are, and then to figure out what their demographics are, figure out what devices are they using and what browsers they're on. Identify if it's groups of people or just individuals. Go ahead and talk about different roles and permissions that might be needed on your portal. This is so important when starting to create a portal. So if you get that in at the beginning, when you go to grow that blueprint and that um, the groundwork is already there. And then you also wanna talk about their engagement preferences. How do these people like to talk to you and what kind of things are they looking for? Are they online more? Are they more in something like a Salesforce where they're trying to do ticketing based? Where are they and how can you reach them? One of our customers was Coolblock. And Coolblock is a company out in California with their nonprofit organization, really. They, they have this 700 page, I don't 100% know that's the amount, I wasn't able to go to my desk to verify that, but they have a seven page book that is this entire program. The entire point of this program is to help people reduce their carbon footprint through their community. And the way they set it up and their hierarchy is that you have a member and those members are part of a household. So you could have multiple people within a household. The households are part of a block and there are multiple blocks within a city. And you report up and then they can send information down. So understanding the flow of information and how people are grouped and what people can be members of was very important when we went ahead and rebuilt this portal and redesigned it and moved it for the future. The other thing that we discussed with them was that there were multiple roles. There were system administrator roles that could do anything to everybody, multiple cities or blocks or households. They could touch the entire system. And then there were specific group roles that we had to define. These are their coaches and their deputies. And these are people that had access to specific information and data within each group. So they couldn't pull certain information and reports about the members if they were a deputy rather than a coach. This also allowed us to create a unique experience depending on who you were. Program managers had access to almost every single resource out there. And as you can see, they even had a message catered directly towards them. And then topic leaders, they had access to less resources and also a different message. So catering interactions with people, once you understand who they are and what kind of information is important to them, is going to be vital to your company's success with this portal. Once you know who your customers are, you definitely want to go ahead and identify touch points and create a journey map. 
Now, when I do talk about journey mapping, usually I do am talking about company wide. And I do think that a journey map for your, your customers company wide is very important to build your portal because your journey maps are going to be a proven framework for helping drive greater customer insights and improving internal efficiencies. What I mean by this is if you go ahead and you look at the journey map across everything from sales to marketing to support to advocacy and even ex customers and you understand how all of them are interacting with you, you can then go ahead and figure out where those touch points are and what those touch points can be in terms of combining them for a portal. How can you get people in right away and keep them in to have a consistent experience with your brand? So when creating a journey map, Again, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. If you were to go ahead and do this, what are some kind of questions that you guys think you might ask when creating a map for your company? Is everybody still muted? All right, well, um, it looks like there's a chat question. Oh, there is? Yeah, if you click on chat in the lower box of the screen, there is a chat question, but I think it was from a prior slide. Well, it was less of a question and more of a comment at the time oh. that, that um, I haven't usually heard it called customer experience portal. I mean, I've heard of partner portal, customer portal, support portal, mm -hmm. right? There's lots of different terms. You were using it in a slightly different way than I had heard before. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I guess to your question, since you're uh, fishing for some feedback, you know, what are questions you might ask? Obviously, like, what is your customer or whoever your constituent is? Mm -hmm. I mean, who, who are they? Like, are they a paying customer? Are they a, you know, prospect who's just interested in learning more? And obviously, as part of who are they? What is important to them? Like, why are you here? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's very good when starting. And I, I have heard these portals referred to as other things in terms of the support or anything like that. Um, it's just you know, we just call them our customer experience ones because we're very big on the customer experience overall, but it is more, you know, of a buzzword than what it actually is. The customer support might be good. I do say that with you have just a customer support portal, it is geared more towards just support rather than the overall experience. So it might not include everything that a customer could possibly look for, it might just be for them to go and have a support ticket entered or a forum that they have to respond to rather than the entire company-wide initiative. Hmm. But, um, again, it's, it's definitely, <laughs> portals are a big thing right now. Any other questions that people might think about asking when doing your, your customer journey? Um, maybe asking them where do you go to get your information? Definitely, definitely a good one. All right, I will okay. go ahead. Here are some of the recommendations I have. Um, in terms of going ahead and putting together the map, it is very similar to doing a buyer persona journey. I don't know if you guys are familiar with HubSpot's idea of that, but when putting together a journey map, you really wanna get specific. You wanna find the friction and you wanna understand how people are interacting with you. How did you hear about us? What issues were you trying to solve? What made you choose us? If you're going to a problem, where would you go to look for that information? Are you Googling it? Would you like to go online? Um, what products and services are you using? The roadblocks, anything like this, try and understand, engage their, their emotions as well while they're going through everything in this entire journey. Again, that's more for the holistic approach, but this is so you could go ahead and train your employees on how to handle people and how to disseminate this information. Because when people are under the support, they want fast, easy answers. They're a bit of a panic. Whereas if they're in the very beginning, they might be more energized and excited and more willing to read more depthful information. So 
making sure that you're catering the portal and sections of it and the information you have to their mental state and meeting them where they are, it's going to make them feel as though you understand them better. So there are a ton of questions you could ask, but these are definitely some of the ones I recommend doing. And then go ahead and create your template. This is the one we have in terms of our journey map when we go ahead and create them for our customers. There are a variety of templates online. You can go ahead and create whatever works best for you. But once you have gathered all of your data and you do your assessment, I highly recommend creating some type of map that you can share with everybody. So your entire team, all of your employees, they understand how things are working together and add this to your operations manual. You could also share this with your customers so you can, they can see the information you're doing um, and just make sure that you have this that everyone can see. So besides that graphic there, I mean, are there kind of typical ways of documenting that customer experience journey? So okay. this, this document down below, as you, you can kind of see the stage and you can define the stages of their journey with you throughout that graphic at the bottom that's really kind of gauging their emotional feelings with you if they're really happy or they're sad or they're you know so so that's how we gauge it there um and then again along the top you can see how they're feeling across different stages of working with you and you could definitely map that in different ways okay I would, I would look at how your company evaluates that. This is just the easiest way for us. We do it through Excel and it's very clean and um, consistent with everything we do. Is that, do you have any other questions? Yeah, but I got a process. This is good. <laughs> well, I have my information at the very end. You're more than welcome to message me and I'm always up for learning and understanding new ideas. This is how we do it at Common Places, but you know, it's always different depending on who you are. So I would love to learn more from you and we can chat after. Great. All right, so in terms of the next tip that I have, well, now you understand your customers, you understand how your touch points are, and now you're gonna go ahead and evaluate what information is crucial to their experience with you. So some important questions to ask when evaluating your information is what information needs to be made available. Again, this is very important. Go back to your journey map and see what information they're interested in. It's not always what you want them to see. It's what they want to see. Then understand where is it pulled from? Is it being pulled from your own personal database? Is it pulled from a website? Is it pulled from a third party? And if it's pulled from a third party, make sure you're evaluating the APIs and integration parts of that because some people don't allow for APIs depending on the information and data being shared. So definitely evaluate that. Then talk about how that should be displayed and then go ahead and talk about permissions in terms of who has permission to see this. And that goes back to the rules that we talked about earlier. And then who has permission to edit and manage it. Again, those are two totally different things. There might be personal data, there might be group data, there might be company data. So understanding the information, where it's coming from, who can see it, how they get to see it, is gonna be really important when putting together your portal. We work with a company called Cyber Reason. It's a cybersecurity firm out in Boston, and they had a need to create a portal for their partners and employees. And they had a ton of knowledge, articles, information that is geared towards both parties, and they needed to create a place in which they could find this information. So we went ahead and did this and they also needed to integrate with Salesforce. So we worked with Salesforce to create that API and creating those custom fields and making sure that what was stored in Salesforce could be synced to Drupal and what was synced in Drupal could be brought up to Salesforce. We then created multiple ways for people to find the information. We used a variety of approaches. In this first one, you can kind of see just their general search area, which searches the entire site. And for this, we used faceted search. And this is something, I'm, I'm not sure if everybody understand, knows this, but faceted search is something similar to what um, Amazon uses in which you go ahead, you have your top level, and as you make decisions, 
more options will pop up. And that was very important for this type of information because it was so vast. And then we also went ahead and we created a filtering search for them just under the knowledge base in particular. And we also included a live chat and keyword searching. So making sure that you have all of this information, understanding how it all interacts and then how your customers will be searching for it is so important because the engagement on this portal is is increasing daily and even more so now, but they, they are continuing to make changes and updates and modification and more people at Cyber Reason are wanting access to this portal just because how powerful it is with all of its information. So, and I, I do apologize, some of their content is confidential, so I just have title of some content in there, but. All right, now tip four is try to figure out how to encourage the engagement of your customers. I recommend doing this through gamification or loyalty system. And when I was researching gamification, I found something very interesting. It was actually coined in 2002 by a developer named Nick Pelling. And his concept was to use gaming elements in a non-gaming context to really interact and teach other people. But if you're using some type of gamification or interaction and engagement with your client, it's going to increase their loyalty and satisfaction of you. It's going to encourage them to interact and they're going to enjoy it. So one of the things that we are a part of is we use Mavenlink as our project management system. And what Mavenlink does really well is they have this portal called Mavenstars. You're given a certain amount of points based on how you interact with them. You could read articles, you could post to Twitter, you can go ahead and just respond to fun questions that they have, like what is your favorite board game? Mine just happens to be Clue, don't tell the rest of my family because they love Monopoly. You get your points and it goes up. And then you can go ahead and spend those, those points in a reward store. They have things such as socks or gift cards, sometimes there was Starbucks, they had a water bottle at one point in time. They even give up consulting if you get a certain amount of points. But this encouragement to engage, read their articles, their case studies, and just engage with the community in general through fun questions goes a long way in terms of building camaraderie among the community as well as makes you feel good interacting with them. So loyalty programs are huge and making things fun is a great way to encourage engagement. So once you have all of that, you have to pull it all together and make sure you're building an intuitive and user-friendly interface. And design is one of the more important things out there because about 48% of people did cite that a website's design is the number one factor in determining the credibility of a business. And I'm including this picture because I'm seeing it everywhere right now of this beam, which is a supporting beam in the middle of a kitchen. And the, the, caption of it is design fail or you had one job, but really if you saw this picture in someone's portfolio, would you chart trust them to design and build a home of yours? Probably not. I mean, or maybe you would because you have a random beam in your house and now you need to have a creative way of working around it. But the design that you show people is heavily reliant on their feeling towards you. So you need to make sure that it's not frustrating, it's easy to use, it's friendly, and that they can come back and keep using it. We did set one dashboard for our com uh, company called Ring at Home, it's one of our clients. They are a company that does makes wellness calls and medication reminders to loved ones from a family. So a family will go ahead and sign up for this. They have a loved one that maybe they can't check in on all the time, maybe they live across the country, and they'll go ahead and put together a schedule of when they get check-in calls, um, just saying, hey, how are you doing? Do you need help? And depending on how people answer, there are messages sent back to the network of friends and family. And so we needed to be able to create a dashboard that would allow the various roles and users to interact and create and build schedules, manage notifications, and add additional members. This went through beta testing and everybody who's used our system has said how warm, inviting, easy to use it is, and that they absolutely love it. So I just think that 
building something that's intuitive and user friendly, it really affects the way they're going to continue working with you because if this was built in a way that they couldn't figure out how to use it, they probably wouldn't continue to use the service. And I do want to say that a portal doesn't necessarily have to be something that is role based or it doesn't have to be something that you spend months and months planning. The CDC.gov, and I understand they have a ton of resources at their disposal. I pulled this a couple days ago. They were able to create a portal just for of information for their customers, which is everybody. So there's no username and password. It's not permission based but they were able to organize the information in a clean way and disseminate it, such as the cases in the US, in a way that's easy to use and understand. And they were able to do this very quickly and it's very helpful for people who are looking to get information. So you don't have to spend a long time and a portal doesn't necessarily have to be a gated thing of information. And one of my favorite quotes that I, that I came across uh, was that ease of use may be invisible, but its absence sure isn't. You will definitely feel the effects if your user interface is not intuitive and easy to use, even though you can't necessarily see that outright. So this is definitely from IBM and I love the quote. All right, so I know we've been talking about portals, but I highly recommend combining it with human interaction. If you think back to that statistic I mentioned earlier, about 60% of people want to go to a portal to find simple tasks or questions or information. And when you combine it with the human interaction, that's, you know, one, two hit. People still want to have that human contact. In fact, 76% of them do. They want that to be part of the customer service. They want to be able to call up and hit zero and talk to an operator and get their questions answered right away. They want to go ahead and try to find the information. If they can't find it, they want to contact someone. And if you go ahead and you have a chat bot, make sure that that chat bot can escalate to an actual real-time person, even if you have that chat bot setting up automatic responses. Sometimes people just get frustrated. In a, re a survey, people spend between five and 15 minutes searching online before directly contacting your company. And if they can't do it and that's not an enjoyable experience, they're probably going to leave you and try and take their business elsewhere. So make sure you're really focusing on the human interaction. Um, make sure that they're empathetic, responsive, honest, reliable, friendly, and flexible. I understand this is not an actual human, but I want to throw my dog's face in there somewhere because I think he's absolutely adorable and he has been my coworker for the past week. So, um, and he has been <laughs> quite supportive of me. And make sure that those human interactions are great because customer service is very important in the overall customer experience. And finally, last but certainly not least, We've got customer success tip number seven, which is listen to your customers. You should be constantly listening to them, doing surveys, getting their feedback, reading online reviews, sitting in on meetings with them, understanding where their pain is, trying to address it, understanding where their joy is and trying to expound upon it. Listening to them and making adjustments to your portal, understanding what features they want, what features they don't want, is of the utmost importance. It also lets you when you go ahead and set up your portal initially to keeping it simple. And that is so important when starting up a portal if you haven't started one already. Figure out what, what items are necessary and then listen to your customers and understand what they would like to see improved. Don't focus on what you think would be a cool thing to add. Then go ahead, update that journey map because you will want to make sure that is as up to date as possible and share it out with the rest of your company, making sure that everyone understands you're keeping everything clear and consistent and the focus should always be on the customers. So in review, um, the seven tips are to first understand who your customers are, go ahead and then identify your touch points, create a journey map, evaluate what information is imperative to them, Encourage engagement, maybe through gamification, building an intuitive and user-friendly interface, making sure you combine with human interaction, and go ahead and make sure you're listening to your customers because they will drive your decisions through points one through six. 
All right, let's definitely connect. I'd love to talk to anybody, see if anyone has any questions. Happy to answer to the best of my ability here. I cannot see a chat, so I'm not sure if anyone is asking questions over chat. Oh, there, maybe. Yeah, it doesn't look like anyone's posed a question in chat. Got it. You folks should just feel free to unmute themselves and uh, jump in. All right. <laughs> You're welcome, Natalie. I'm glad you love seeing my dog. Please send me an email with a picture of yours if you have one, because I do love animals so much. Or we could chat about the customer experience, which is what I'm here for anyways. All right, well, if there aren't any questions, like I said, feel free to reach out to me after this. Um, happy to chat and learn more from you and give you my opinions and insight into what I've been researching. Wonderful. Thank, Thank you. you. You're so welcome.